Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to this 1111 portal video of 2023. My name is Ona Christie, visionary artist and mystic, and I'm going to be sharing a few things about this particular time that we're in, the 1111, um, that will hopefully shed some light on this for you and uh, help us to all move together in a, um, a more harmonious way through this time. All right, so first of all, I'm going to be sharing what the 1111 is, the meaning of that, the energies of this year's 1111, what makes the 111123 different from previous 1111s. Um, I'm going to share some channeled art and a message from Spirit Owl here. And I'll be doing a reading with my Spirit Animal Awareness deck to support us through this portal. And finally, stay to the end because I'm going to invite you to a really special 1111 event. All right, so let's start with the meaning of 1111. Why is it such an important date? <clears throat> well, first of all, it's um, a, a date that falls really close to Samhain or Halloween or All Hallows Day, right? Um, this, uh, this is an ancient, ancient holiday that represents a cross-quarter point of the year. So it's like right between the equinox and the solstice. And um, it's in the sign of Scorpio that we're in right now, which is a sign uh, that really has to do a lot with um, spirituality and um, death and rebirth and all sorts of really, really deep things going deep into the other world. OK, and um, so the 1111 usually comes a little bit after that, but it's still in that window of that incredibly powerful cross quarter date. And it has, it resonates with the energy of the number 11. 11 is a master number, so it's an extremely powerful number in numerology. And it's associated with spiritual awakening, right? Um, or spiritual enlightenment. So the 1111 is a time, a portal of time here where the energies coming into the earth are really ones that catalyze our uh, spiritual awakening and also to help to work with the awakening process of the earth herself and humanity. I, I've been doing these videos for a few years since 2020 and I, this year I'm seeing a really significant shift in energy around the 1111, okay? So the last few 1111s have felt to me, I felt very strong influxes of very electric energy coming into the earth. And these were energies uh, meant to kind of wake up the, the spiritual body of the earth and of, of people. In fact, one of them, I can't remember which year, but it almost felt like this, this um, you know, when they jolt somebody who's had a heart attack to get that heart moving again, okay? That's what these energies have felt like. They've been very, very intense. And, um, but this year it feels really, really different, okay? I, I went in and asked my intuitive guidance, my higher guidance, my Akashic guides to help to clarify this. And here's the message that they have. I'm going to just read it to you. It's, they said, trust the source. Trust the source, okay? This is an internal shift. It's a more subtle, energetic expression of this date than in the previous three years. Do not be deceived by the subtlety. This is an energetic in turning, it holds the template for larger numbers of people than ever before to begin to turn inwards for answers that cannot be found in external reality. Okay, so one thing I want to point out is that what I've noticed is when these energies come in for the Lionsgate or the 1111 or whatever it is, um, they come in, you can feel them really intensely during that portal, but really what they're doing is that they're, they're activations on the earth and that the effect of those activations rolls out over time, okay? Um, so several years in a row, we've been receiving these really magnetic energies. This has stirred up a lot of stuff, okay? And, and it's a lot of the stuff that we're starting to see now out in the world, on the news, um, a lot of the chaos that's starting to happen. Uh, to me, it's like the, the 11 and 11 energies are purifying energies a lot of times at least those um, really electric ones. And what that does is it it shakes loose anything that's um, 
kind of like energies that are holding back the ascension, any of the dark energies, shaking them loose so that they can come up to the surface, okay? And we need to really remember, if you've been through a dark night of the soul of your own, or maybe you're in one right now, it's really uncomfortable. It can be extremely painful. And But what it does is it pulls up, it draws up all the shadow stuff, okay, that has been repressed, um, all the stuff that's been running the dark programming that's been keeping us in a, a place of um, uh, unawareness and uh, um, a, a place of keeping the energy down, okay? All that stuff's being shaken up because it needs to come to the surface so that we can see it, acknowledge it, and then begin to heal it, okay? So that is what we are experiencing as a collective. And this may be a very long process. It could be hundreds, even thousands of years, right? So we're seeing this all kind of really coming to a big head right now. Um, though this could be a very interesting few years ahead of us. Um, it goes on the energetic level, it goes beyond politics and so forth. And, and just be aware of all the divisions that we're seeing on the earth um, is part of all that dark infrastructure, okay? So the more we can start seeing heart to heart, and recognizing other human beings as human beings, right? Um, despite whatever divisions of, of sex, gender, religion, um, you know, anything else that you can think of that is being used to divide us, um, we need to really, as light workers, work from the heart and, and recognize that. That said, spiritual protection is huge right now. Huge, huge, huge. All kinds of protection, not just spiritual, but whatever, you know, you feel guided to do to protect yourself, to protect your home, to protect your family, um, follow those little voices, all right? So um, I'm going to move more into the practical things that we can do, and for that I'm going to be um, working with this beautiful uh, spirit guide, the spirit owl that came forward in a painting not too long ago, because Owl, um, let's show you this painting here. Whoops, we can do that. Okay, Owl came in with a message, right? And Owl is a beautiful animal of the night. And a lot of people are afraid of Owl because it is historically associated with death and so forth, right? But we have to remember that every archetype, including especially the spirit animals, have their polarity. They've got the negative and the positive. And even within that, um, you know, if you look at death as one of the attributes of Owl, there's very positive things. You have to have a death before you have a rebirth. That's what we're looking at right now. All right. Um, so here is the message from Owl. And this is Snowy Owl in particular. Sink into the silence. North is the direction of magnetism. In the deep stillness of absolute zero, you will hear the whispers of the world beyond. Some are like the wind wailing in the night, but the whispers you want to hear are less heard than felt. To hear them, you must settle into stillness. Even when the wind blows, you can hear without ears. Even in motion, you can be as still as stone. Listen not to the words of the wind, but feel for its directions. All right. So there's a lot to unpack here. Um, Owl speaks very poet poetically, but I just want to point out just a few things. I will um, actually paste his words here in the description box below if you want to meditate on them. First of all, Owl is mentioning the direction of north, and that, I feel like that's a direction that we're kind of collectively moving into. Of course, north is usually associated with winter, which of course we're moving into the winter season, so that's very appropriate. Um, but it's also, um, there's a couple of elements connected with north, okay? And in the Western spirit tradi spiritual traditions, usually north is associated with earth, the element of earth. Okay, so this is, I'm seeing this as an encouragement for grounding. It's going to be super, super, super important, okay? Because a lot of the stuff that's going to be happening in the world or is already starting to happen. Um, is chaotic and it can create a lot of trauma, okay? What trauma does is it causes us to dissociate, right? It causes a dissociation to where the spirit wants to uh, separate from the body. And, and so we're in the state of not being uh, fully in our bodies, okay? And so 
the encouragement is to really, really work with grounding techniques. Um, if you can work barefoot, um, there's breathing techniques you can use to ground and really connect with earth. When we connect with earth, remember that um, earth too is in an ascension process. Earth has a 3D self and a 5D self, which is what we're moving into embodying, but we can connect with that 5D earth. So when you ground, really imagine that you're connecting with the, the crystal heart heart of earth or with the ascending earth with the higher self of earth however you want to see that with the healed earth okay connect with that side of earth because that will help to anchor in that energy of the 5d earth into the present moment all right so really really important to ground um north in um i think much for most of the, the americas is associated with the element of air okay which of course relates right back to the spirit owl here uh, but air is the element of mind okay so really important to work with the mind and work with our understanding so if you follow me for a while you know how enthusiastic i am about the spiritual laws and learning those i'm going to be offering some courses in 2024 but both on spiritual laws um, and working with spirit animals also, and also I'm feeling one on spiritual protection. So watch for those. If you haven't yet subscribed, subscribe to my channel and I'll also leave the link below to subscribe to my email list. Um, if you're interested in learning more about those courses when they become available. All right. So um, really, really important to be working also with our minds and to master the mind, okay? The mind is that through which we understand and that we can start to work with our emotional bodies and our physical bodies. Think of yourself like a, um, a, a martial arts master has to really master the mind, okay? Um, and we also have to master that intellect part of the mind that wants to go on and on like I am right now, okay? So, um, all right, so we also, uh, Owl is talking about the deep stillness of absolute zero, coming into stillness. He's really harping on that um, and, and really listening and feeling, okay, for the answers. North is a direction often associated with the warrior, okay? So it is actually going into the shadow, and becoming aware of, you know, those shadow elements, the wounded elements, the elements that want to bring us down, anything like that. Owl talks about some of the whispers that you may hear when you tune in are like the wind wailing in the night. I think he's referring to the 4D realm or the, um, like the astral world where not everything in there is of a higher light, okay? And sometimes it pretends to be. So we want to really be aware often when things are really screaming at us, then be aware that sometimes that can be just sort of a, a, a decoy, okay? Um, he says the whispers you want to hear are less heard than felt. So really coming into stillness, really listening to those inner sensations, uh, tuning into the body that will help us to realize when we are attuned and aligned with spirits, okay? Um, to hear those really deep whispers, you have to settle into stillness and encouragement to practice meditation or whatever it is that can still the mind so that we can open to the higher guidance coming in, okay? Which we all have. We all have a direct connection with higher self, okay? Um, but he says, even when the wind blows, even when things are completely chaotic, right, and um, all sorts of things wanting to pull us out of our bodies, out of our minds, right, we're going to see a lot in the years ahead of people going out of their minds in one way or another, okay, and that can mean, oh, oh no, madness and possession, and it can also mean, um, you know, being out of your mind, it can mean being overly wrapped up in the emotional right, and what's physically or emotionally happening to you and forgetting to use your reason as well, okay? Um, so, but even when that wind blows, if we tune in and come into stillness, we can hear without ears, okay? Again, coming into that really deep state of meditative connection, right? Um, even in motion, you can be still a stone. So we're all going to be called into action um, in these next few years, right? There's maybe a lot of upheaval, and e but even when you're in very 
uh, an active mode. He's saying you can you can have that stillness, that inner peace inside, right? Um, listen not to the words of the wind, feel for its directions, okay? So um, I, I feel like this is encouraging us to really tune into that receptive state, which is a divine feminine state, okay? There is a lot of uh, a, a profane feminine energy out there right now. Um, somebody I was listening to online recently stated, and I think she was correct, um, that we're really not in a patriarchy anymore. We're in a matriarchy. Emotions right now are ruling the world. And so well, um, I, I feel like this, what Owl is saying, Owl has a deep connection with the deep feminine, um, is to connect with the sacred feminine, which is, first of all, really connecting with that deep stillness and the deep intuitive, right? Because uh, um, unsettled emotions can pull you out of that. And then when we are really connected with that deep intuitive, the absolute zero, then we can intend with intention, um, start tuning into the, uh, uh, the the positive emotional aspects of, of the feminine, which can include compassion and motherly love, okay? Um, okay, so we're gonna uh, move on here. And um, by the way, I'm gonna put this a little painting on my website. Uh, I'm not gonna do prints because it's gonna be hard with the feathers, but I think somebody may enjoy this little guy in your home or your um, place of business just to bring in that deep stillness sense of feminine expression and the wisdom of the owl to see through the dark and to hear also for the true voice of spirit. Okay, so let's see, moving on. Um, again, the energies of 1111 11 this year, 2023, is going to be more interning. And what all this is going to do, all the stuff that's happening in the world is going to help people, uh, more people than ever before are going to be turning inwards and learning to tune into their own guidance, right? And to uh, come within and find that place of stillness. And often it may be through the trial and, you know, trial, but uh, I think it's really important to keep that in mind that this is ultimately supporting the ascension of the earth. Okay. Um, all right. So let's, let's do a reading. Um, I'm going to uh, choose two cards here to support us through this 11-11-2023 um, portal. And remember also uh, stay tuned because I have an invitation for you once the reading, reading is done. But I'm going to choose first a card to talk about the, the, the shadow side and what might be challenging us. Um, wolf. Okay. So wolf is a, a an incredible animal of awareness right again it's it's one that has this piercing gaze um let's look at the shadow side of the wolf okay which is cruelty um and if you think of all the wolves in the storybooks right that are just conniving and um you know wanting to just take you down a kind of predator, predator energy. All right. So this is something that we all need to be aware of. Now there's really positive aspects of wolf as well. And um, maybe we'll just stick with wolf for both challenger and support. Okay. Um, so challenging part is predator. And I just had been doing a lot of delving into um, metaphysics physics and the occult um, and, and looking at the history of the occult. And I'm more and more, the more I read from different sources and reading between the lines, I'm seeing that there is a, a, a certain, well, there's like secret, secret societies have been running the world for a long, long time. And not all of them are evil, right? There are some that are really meaning, you know, have very benevolent intentions and others that have very, uh, very predatory intentions. Okay, so I think it's really, really important that we become aware of this. And this is one reason why I'm, I'm such an advocate of learning, you know, at least the basic uh, laws of the universe so that you can start to see 
you know, when things go down out there, um, start to see some of the causes and effects and, and start to notice when things don't seem natural. Okay. And so this is really going to be an important, it's important right now, and it's going to be even more important over the next year or two or whatever. Um, but it's something we can do is to, to connect with this wolf energy and, and really start learning. A wolf is a teacher and teaches through the generations. We can learn the spiritual laws. We can start becoming aware of the energies around us. You start feeling into, um, just like the, the owl um, also feeling into, is this really what it seems to be? Or is this a veil that's being put over us in order to connive and uh, prey upon uh, you know the people? Um, so wolf in its positive aspect is a real warrior again i think that fits really well with the direction of north which is often associated with the warrior also with the elder um uh, wolf is also a beautiful animal uh, symbolizing the elder and and kind of keeping law and order all right and so i feel like the next uh, probably several hundreds of years are going to be a shift from external law and, and order into more internal law and order. So being attuned with universal law, with divine law. But that's something that each and every individual has to learn to attune to and understand and deeply understand and embody. And that is what's going to bring about the new society that is right now in its very infancy we're sowing the seeds for it right now but has a lot to do with awareness and to and 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 with internalizing the discipline and the laws okay which means connecting with your higher self with your own and and, and liberating your own voice okay so wolf um teaches us to stand in our own truth, to track down our own truth, and to, uh, um, you know, come into the, uh, strengthen that throat chakra. This is the seat of will, right? The divine will. When we align with divine will, when we then we can become a channel for and a vessel for divine will and start to live our truth, live our purpose, and um, do the work of spirit here on earth, the work of divine spirit. Okay, so wolf is a, a beautiful animal for us to connect with right now. All right, so uh, before I let you go, um, I do have a um, an event coming up on the 11-11 at 11 a.m. Eastern time. It is a, um, a meditation event that um, it's part of my um, ministry, which is uh, called Spoken Earth Ministries. It's a, a group or a private membership group for starseeds and light workers, and it is free to join. You just have to sign a little agreement to keep it all in the private, and it's twice monthly. Events are free, and this month we have a healing circle event later in the month but also on the 11 11 we're going to gather together we're going to work with the crystal beings with the crystal kingdom and it's a living crystal grid event so we're going to set intention for higher love and for peace right and for um you know whatever else you want to set personally and we're going to come into uh, um, a gathering together, work with the crystal beings and have a beautiful meditation and create kind of a living crystal grid across the miles. So you are very much invited to that. The, um, I'll put the link to that in the description box below. And until then, thank you so much for joining me. All my love goes out to you. And remember, you were born to be free. <laughs>